Morocco had a talk <laughs> show segment for about eight seconds, and you were the guest. Um, let's start with how you got hired. How did the phone call come in? Who did it come from to bring you up to New York? I was working for uh, Stu Hart and Bret Hart's family in Calgary uh, at that time, and and uh, they WWE WWF at the time came was coming to Calgary to run a big super show at the Calgary Stampede uh, that that year, and Stu was able to persuade Vince to let us have let him have Stu at least one match on that show that night at the Calgary Stampede mm -hmm. and he, he got myself and Dan Crawford on that show and that's how then because of course Hogan was booked on the show and Hogan pitched me the idea of why haven't I come to New York and why haven't I joined up with them and I I mean to be point blank and be honest I said well you know I I didn't really know who to contact, and I wasn't sure if I was good enough. Uh, because you looked at the talent that was there. You had Roddy Piper, and you had uh, Cowboy Bob Orton, and you had the Big John Studd. You had Andre the Giant. Uh, you had Hogan, and you had uh, Jesse Ventura, and you had Bobby the Brain. And the list went on and on of superstar talent and managers that were in the company. And, of course, the Saturday night main events were a huge hit during that period of time. They had just started doing those, and they were like super, super huge hits. And, and everyone was watching those things and talking about them. And you look at it, and you see this big extravaganza with the lights and the flash bulbs they were using and all this new technology. And, it, you know, here we are wrestling in Calgary and Edmonton and Barnes and, and, and bingo halls and things like we had done all through our career. And you see this big show that WWF has, and you think, well, gosh, am I good enough to be part of that? And uh, and Hogan says, heck, man, he said, you know, but I, you need to be there with us, not here in Calgary. And uh, he said, you know, Vince likes me and what we're doing and everything, and business is great. And if you wanted to come along for the ride, I'll. I'll he, he said, I talk to the guy all the time. He'll probably call me tonight. And I'll tell him to give, give me your number, and I'll have him call you. The next morning, the phone rang, and it was Vince McMahon. About 8 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. We did the show. show was a Saturday night. And uh, he mentioned uh, that he, he got a, a good review from Hogan about me, and uh, he'd like to bring me over and talk to me. And on a Wednesday, they had me FedEx me a plane ticket. And I, from Calgary, I flew over to there on a Wednesday because we were off for Stu. And uh, got hired and went back. And I said, you know, I told Vince and in the beginning, I said, I'd really like to give Stu a notice, you know, and let him know what's going on. And he said, oh, I'll, I'll call Stu if he, while you're on the plane. I'll talk to him. What was your first face-to-face -face with Vince like? How much uh, did he tell you he wanted to do with you? Or? Uh, gosh, it was. I went to the office and right away, we had a small office there in in. in uh, they were in Stamford, Stanford, I think, at yeah. the time, or that one. It was a little small office there, not not too far from where the new building is. And uh, sat down with Vince, and he told me that, that all these things that Hogan had told him about, you know, our history together with Hogan, and and he knew what I was doing in Calgary because he had his thumb on the business. I offer you opportunity, and I have this vision of. He told me to bring a tape. Bring me, he uh -huh. said, bring me a, a tape of something of, you know, not a long tape, a long match or anything like that, but something where I can see what you look like in the ring, and, and I really need to see an interview, if you have something on an interview. And I had a good, like, two-minute, 40, 248, or three-minute interview that I had done outside of the baseball park in Calgary before one of the matches with this fella, Dan Crawford, and it was one of those things where I... It was really me selling myself for those three minutes and not so much talking about the match as opposed to, you know, what I was going to be doing and what kind of person I was and all these things that I had accomplished. And what Vince, I think, saw in that was the fact that I could carry a three-minute interview, right. which a lot of guys can't carry sometimes 30 seconds but that I was not camera shy and, and I looked into the mm -hmm. camera and I was self-selling and self-promoting. And then, of course, I, then I had to 
a long Cuban cigar and the black hair, the sideburns, the jumpsuit, and fake diamond rings on my hands. And it was a heel promo. I was yes, right? it was a heel promo. A heel. Yes, and I was very animated, uh, you know, hands and talking and moving and and uh, then the sh I had a short match segment that I used uh, with. Uh, Myself and someone, and he saw just a second. He really didn't care about the matches. Right. Um, after he saw the interview, he was sold on me. And he, then he was saying uh, he had this vision of me being a good guy. Right. Why? That's what I was going to ask you. We had a successful heel run. He sees a heel <laughs> tape. Why does he want to make you baby face? He saw, and here's his words, I can see little kids wearing jumpsuits and and girls with scarves, and you throw the scarves out, and and the Elvis sunglasses, and right. and he, it was all merchandise. Marketing. It was angle, all merchandise. Yeah, yeah. And I said, to, I, Vince, I, I haven't developed this character to be a good guy. Right. I, I've created this to be like this nasty, dastardly bad guy. Yeah. And it was working very well for me there in Calgary. I mean, I was hated across Canada, and uh, and so uh, now let me let me backtrack just yeah. for a minute so that because you you had set you, you you set this up about me coming into to Ontario and uh, Brantford, I yes. think it was for the first TV taping, and they brought me as a good guy. But let me backtrack for a second because Stu and I had a disagreement. Like I normally did with a lot of promoters, and I did with Vince, and you know, it's normal in our course of doing sure. business back then. That you know, we were self-employed, sure. and we were independent wrestlers, and there was tons of places for us to go. So, if we thought the grass was greener somewhere else, we would uh, uh, ask for more money, and if we didn't get it, then we would move on to another pasture. So. <laughs> Kind of like what Stu told me. Hey, if you think the grass is greener, go graze somewhere else. So, <laughs> is that when you left? Uh, kinda, yeah. And so I went over to Vancouver for the uh, opposition promotion, which they weren't really opposition. They ran in Vancouver and around British Columbia. Mm -hmm. But they had TV there that went across Canada, the same as TBS did in Atlanta, across America. Yeah. So for about a year, I was going out of Calgary, eight months or a year, I was out of Calgary on this nationwide TV across Canada doing this honky-tonk man, jumpsuit, guitar, the whole works. The same thing that I was doing in Calgary, I did in Vancouver. Now, Calgary was localized with TV only in Saskatchewan and across Edmonton. And it didn't go into Vancouver. It didn't go into British Columbia. But the British Columbia TV, it's called, it was called BC TV, went across the nation live every Saturday at like 5 o'clock mm -hmm. in the afternoon on Saturday. So being on that TV, all the people in Canada, all the wrestling fans knew me as this bad guy. Right. And when Vince said good guy, I knew, I just knew that I couldn't make it work that way. I just, it, I had been a bad guy for so ten, 10 years of my career that I had never even tried to be, a, you know, a good baby face, good guy. And there's the irony that the first taping they put you in Brantford, and that's where, where people we're going. have there, yeah, seen, you, yeah, yeah. and yeah. they go, what? Yeah, you right away see, you caught on to this. So we go into Canada. And he brings me out then, like you said, on one of these things, and we did like three TV tapings there, and, uh, and, and all three tapes I was on, I was booed out of the building. I mean, just completely booed out of the building. They had to put soundtrack behind it, I think, to make it sound like the people liked me. And they were a little bit taken aback, Vince was, and he said, uh, he, he said, uh, boy, the for some reason, you really are a bad guy. I said, and then I explained to him why. Right. And he said, but that's okay, we can, we can fix that. And the, the, how he wanted to do it then was have me do some segments with Hogan. Some little cutaway, clip cutaway segments and short interview segment 
with me with Hogan to get a rub off of Hogan oh. so that I was Hogan's new guy coming in to help Hogan take care of Piper and take care of Orndorff and watch Hogan's back and three more tapes in Canada <laughs> it still didn't work they booed me out of the building even more so <laughs> So that's how it really got started, and, and then for the next four or five weeks, uh, with the American crowd now hearing yeah. the booing out of Canada, yeah. they follow suit. They yeah. they hated me in America sure. when they had never seen me in America as the honky tonk man. It right. had not been seen there, other than down south in Mobile and Pensacola in southeastern wrestling, where I had created it right. a, a, a few years before that. But that was very localized there also. So not too many people knew about it. Don Morocco, I think everyone would agree, one of the great talkers in a promo setting yes. in the business. And here perhaps is a lesson for folks that being a great talker doesn't always translate to being a great host. Those were rough segments. That, that, that one was kind of rough too. And, and you know, he was, he was making fun of me on the segment. And I was trying to be a good guy, but he's making, now he's the bad guy. So he'll, obviously he's going to make fun of the good guy and he's making fun of me and I'm trying to defend myself, but we're in Canada and the people were listening in the building and they're cheering what he's saying about me. So it made it extremely difficult mm -hmm. 